Indian Gamer here, and the 1.2 Zenless Zone Zero special program has released, at least the time I'm recording this video, of course. So, um, anyways, of course, I am going to be doing the discussion and thoughts video because, well, I just wanted to talk about what is new in 1.2, why I'm so excited about it, what info they have, etc, etc. But first of all, um, I haven't showcased any builds. Um, in the last special program, which is 1.1. So now I'm actually going to showcase builds. Yeah, that means that uh, Caesar and Bernice, yep, their kit um, has been, well, at least released in the uh, time that the special program released. I always talk about their kit um, at least after the video release so that, well, everyone knows what their kit does because they officially show it. So I can dive deeper into their kit and what they can do, etc, etc. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. So with that being said, all my info comes from, of course, the Zenless Zone Zero special program. And as well as Genshin Labs, because Genshin Labs actually uh, puts out the character kit. So now we can actually see what the character is. So yeah. Well, anyways, without any further ado, um, I am just going to be going to the events tab. Because it's um really quiet at the event tab, I see there. And, of course, I'm going to be transitioning now to the uh, special program. So, uh, well, anyways, without any further ado, let's just transition right here and let's talk about the special program. So there's a lot of stuff to talk about, really. I'm going to be talking about everything before we go on to the, um, well, uh, of course, the kits. Um, but I'm going to be talking about the, uh, well, all the new stuff first, and then we're going to be talking about the kits, and we're going to be talking about the special events and the new optimizations that they did. So, without any further ado, let's go. So, uh, well, the event, uh, well, at least for 1.2, the version name Tor de Inferno, which is, uh, going to be a, uh, well, a really, really big update because we actually get a new story quest, uh, aka Chapter 3. Uh, where we explore the outer ring. Yeah, that means that we are going to be fighting new bosses. We're going to be exploring new areas. As you see there, we're going to be skipping the head right here. We, you already saw all the footage scrubbed right there. Yeah, I see new area right there. It's the outer ring. There's going to be new boss fights, of course. There's going to be a lot of new stuff, as you see there. There's going to be new mini games. Just a lot of new stuff, actually. Yeah, as you see there, yeah, we play as Caesar. And when we ride on the bike... Yeah, it's just a lot of new stuff, really. So yeah, um, of course, uh, well, we can just talk about all the characters here. So uh, Caesar, as you see there, Caesar is S rank, S rank shielder character, S rank physical shielder agent, as you see there. So um, her kit is actually pretty, pretty unique. So she's actually a stunner and a buffer. Yeah, you wouldn't believe me, but that's actually the case. So what her main gimmick is, um, we can just let it play. You press, well, the special button to parry counter. You can also press it multiple times right here to do a bunch of, uh, well, damage, as you see there. It also inflicts a lot of days too. There's also stuff um, that they discussed here, like her additional abilities, as you see there. Um, it does trigger if you have a defensive assist or in the same faction, which means that it works on the characters or agents like Ellen, which also has a defensive assist. Basically anyone, anyone who has a parry. So like the Cole, Sokaku, uh, Lycon, any of those uh, agents that trigger defensive assist, uh, her additional ability works. And it's a pretty, pretty good additional ability. Of course, we're going to be going over, um, of course, we'll be going over that in the uh, Genshin Labs segment of the video. Um, they also discuss about her core right here. So um, basically, when you press your special, aka your E, you unlock her core passive, and when you use her core passive, you get a shield. You can pass it on to anyone, basically. Um, and it gives you anti-interrupt resistance and attack, which is really, really good. It means that she is a supporter, and a stunner at the same time, which is pretty, pretty good. She's actually really, really busted, as you see there. Um, they also showcase, I think, more gameplay uh, right here. Um, yeah, they show her ults right here, and it looks pretty, pretty good. So we're going to be backing up a bit right here. We're going to be showcasing her ult. Yeah, as you see there, that's her shield. Works pretty, pretty well. Um, this is her ultimate right here. Pretty, pretty good, too. Look at that. Looks absolutely stunning. 
Yeah, um, she looks extremely, extremely good. Um, definitely a must pick up though, because, uh, well, um, I'm gonna be discussing about it later, but she's meta. She's absolutely meta. And next up, we have, um, the other S rank from phase two, which is Bernie Swipe. So, um, Bernice is a fire anomaly character, which is pretty cool, but her kit is really weird. Uh, you, you'll know what I mean when I talk about her additional ability. But, um, her main gimmick is that she's a flamethrower character. She shoots flames, and that's basically it. Um, she causes fire anomaly buildup to inflict burn. When you inflict burn, you do burn shenanigans, really. So, yeah, as you see there, um, burn, and, well, that's basically all she does. As you see there, you can just... Hold her special, her EX special, or her special to, uh, well, just continuously put out flames, as you see there. Um, pretty, pretty nice, really. She looks pretty, pretty good. Um, yeah, as you see there with her core passive, um, when you do a, uh, nitro fuel cocktail state, aka just burning the opponent, you basically, uh, get a lot of stuff. And then when you do a, uh, normal attack, I think, I think that's what it is. Yeah, attack an enemy. If squad mates attack an enemy, which means that it could be either Bernice or any other member on your team, um, they will inflict the afterburn effect. And the afterburn effect just does more, um, fire damage and does extra damage too. So it's pretty, pretty good. It means that Bernice can, uh, trigger, uh, a lot of stuff off field too, which is pretty, pretty nice. So yeah. Um, looks like, uh, she is basically kind of a support-esque, uh, character, as you see there. Um, we can also see her ultimate right here. Glorious Inferno looks pretty, pretty cool, as you see there. Looks pretty nice. Um, they did pair her up with Jane, as you see there. Pretty good, um, for, uh, pretty good for Anomaly teams right here. You are gonna be running double Anomaly anyway with Bernie, so it's pretty, pretty good that she is able to get that. Um... I think they also they also discuss about a bunch of stuff too right here. Um yeah, right here. So we have uh, signal searches and we have Caesar uh we have uh the sense of Caledon themselves, uh as you see there. So um before I talk about anything else, firstly we are gonna get a Lucy for free. Yes, they did discuss about this. Um it's later on in the special program, but I just wanted to say it here because it's still early in the video. I just wanted to get it out of the way. Yes, we get a Lucy for free! So you get uh basically one of the best supports in the game. Yep. <laughs> so uh yeah, she's actually pretty pretty good. Um what makes her truly shine though is her uh MC6. Mindscape Cinema 6, where she's able to basically get infinite cheer on. If you don't know what cheer on is, it's the buff that Lucy gives to her teammates. Um, that is why she is a support character. So yeah, um, and cheer on gives attack. So it's pretty, pretty good on characters like Caesar 2, because Caesar also gives attack. So you just get a double attack buff, which is pretty, pretty nice. Speaking of Caesar, we have Caesar King, um, as you see here. Um, she is the phase one banner, so she is gonna come out first, of course, with her W engine. By the way, her W engine's info has not been released yet, so we don't know what her W engine is. But if I had to make a guess, it'll probably just be a, well, a support. Probably a support or impact-esque um, W engine, where she's able to get more stun, maybe. Or maybe she's able to provide more attack for party members. Or maybe they increase the shield strength. Who knows? But, um... It's probably going to be centered around her kit, most likely. Uh, just like any other, uh... Just like any other, uh, special, um, event, uh, agent, W engine. And then for phase two, we have Bernice White. Uh, she is, of course, going to be featured with her W engine. Of course, if I have to take a guess on what her, uh, W engine would do, it's probably going to increase her anomaly buildup, of course, maybe AP. AP might just be, like, the main stat. And then there'll probably be like uh, fire damage or off-field damage gets increased or something like that. Off-field uh, increase or anomaly buildup or uh, anomaly mastery might increase more. Um, either way, she's probably going to be extremely good. Um, definitely not a skip unless you like don't use fire teams that much. Yeah, um, she looks pretty, pretty decent. Of course, they also showed off the Bang Boo that um, we are going to be getting. This is the Sense of Caledon Bing Boo, um, the red Mocus, as you see here. Um, none of his info has been released yet. All we know is that he's just from the Sense of Caledon, and that's it, really. Um, 
They also discussed about other things too, but I'm not sure if they uh I'm not sure if they actually showcased it. I think they showcased it later on, but there is a new set of W not W engines, a new set of discs. Yeah, a new set of discs. But um yeah, as you see there I think I did scrub over it. Yeah, right here. New disc sets, as you see there. But enough about that. I think this is the end of the first segment, which means that we can actually go to um, Caesar and Bernice's info. And then let's talk about them, really. I mean, it is a discussion and thoughts video after all, so it can't be a discussion and thoughts video without discussing about their kit, right? Well, anyways, without further ado, here we go. Yep, this is their stats from the beta, as you see there. Um... Well, anyways, uh, let's talk about it. So, as you see here, her impact's actually pretty high. Yep, 105. Um, there's a reason why she is like that. Uh, I think her core level up stat... Um, we can't just look at it. See, we could uh, just go to level 60. So, this is her level 60. As you see there, uh, her impact is increasing, which is pretty, pretty good. Um, it means that her uh, impact is going to be her main level up stat. As you see there, it doesn't... Um, increase this is her stats by the way without um w engine without discs as you see there so yeah um as you see here her kit is pretty pretty basic really she just gets normal attacks um she just gets a lot of stuff right here you can long press to do uh stuff um you can also trigger combos too which is pretty pretty nice it means that you're able to go into your specials pretty pretty good it means that she's able to connect to her special and that is actually her main gimmick right here so a lot of her stuff combos into special we're just gonna be talking about that mainly and um, before we talk about the other stuff so let's talk about her special so um her shield bash is Basically her bread and butter. So when she uses her shield, she's able to make a precision block as you saw in the, uh, well, in the Caesar gameplay. She's able to block attacks. Um, afterwards, you could, you're able to use your special to just do a bunch of uh, impact damage, I assume. Um, you could also do a lot of damage as well. You could probably make her a main DPS if you want to. Um, overall, she's just going to be using that to get her shield up. And if you do use special, you can um, just follow up into a lot of stuff. So, as you see there, it triggers combo. You can also um, use special or enhance special skills um, automatically. When you're in the combo state, you're able to do a lot of things. So, after shield bash, you can do straight jab. After straight jab, you could do parry counter attack. It's pretty, pretty cool, as you see there. So, yeah, um, th these uh, just uh, do a lot of things. Um, she is able to combo without special, aka not EX, aka no energy. She can combo with no energy. And she can also combo from no energy with energy. So you can't just do straight jab and you could probably just do parry counter attack. So yeah, it's it's really, really unique um, for uh, a uh, agent in ZZZ. She's able to just combo into anything she wants, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, this is also one of our first parry agents that don't require assist or defensive assist really but defensive assist is tied to her core gameplay um you'll probably see why as you see here so um this is her ex so when you use her ex of course you block and then you can also do a combo attack um when you do that you could also go into parry slash when you go to parry slash you could do super powerful slash so it's basically a three hit combo as you see there um without uh energy it is a two hit combo uh with energy it's a three hit combo as you see there um she's able to be invincible too uh, which is pretty pretty cool it means that you're able to do a ton of impact um i assume because you are just parrying and countering which is going to cause a lot of impact so yeah um her main bread and butter really i'm trying to say here is that you want ex of course or special um trigger a lot of specials do her full combo and that's basically it really so um we can also talk about her core. Her core is her main, um, her main, uh, well, reason why she is a semi-support and semi-impact character, I guess I would say. Semi-stunner. Um, as you see here, when you activate your parry slash or finishing move, um, if you don't know what those are, it's right here. Parry, counter-attack, parry slash, super powerful slash. That's also considered a finishing move. As you see there, it's pretty, pretty cool. When you do that, you're able to generate a shield up to these percentage of your own impact percent. So yeah, impact, by the way. Um, impact is a really important stat, so you're probably are going to be running mainly 
a two-piece impact, so two-piece Shockstar Disco, because um there is a W, uh, well, not W engine, there is a disc set made specifically for her, but you still want impact um, just for the shield. So you basically want to run two-piece impact. That is your main two-piece set. Um, and also, um, besides impact, of course, you're able to generate uh, a lot of shield from points via points. So 700% of 2,000 points to create a, a well, 2,000 point shield, which is pretty, pretty cool. Lasts for 90 seconds, which means that it lasts forever. Um, it's also, uh, well, the shield is shared by the entire team, which is pretty cool. It means that uh, you don't have to do chains, you don't have to do uh, quick assist to just transfer the shield over, which is pretty cool. So it's basically a one and done. She could just stay on her own, just build a ton of uh, stun and then able to daze the enemy, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, as you see here with her additional ability, they already talked about it, but they didn't talk about the specific buff that it gives you. So... When you trigger a parry support, um, well, uh, when you do a precision blocker combo, um, it can be activated if you have a parry support or um, characters in the same, uh, well, faction as Caesar, aka Sons of Caledon, aka parry supports like Ellen, Lycon, Sokaku, Chingyi, etc. Basically, those characters that do have a defensive support, they will basically mark an enemy and increases the damage caused to them by 25% increases the damage they deal by 25 percent that's that's busted that's absolutely busted free attack by the way free attack it's just free attack yeah um and all she has to do is do a precision blocker combo guess what she doesn't even need energy to do a combo anyway because when you use the shield bash aka when she doesn't have energy she goes into combo yeah which is all you have to do is do it raw. Just do it raw. And that's it. <laughs> that's it. She gets her additional ability. Of course, um, now we can actually talk about her um, basic attacks. So as you see there, um, there are ways to get to combo. You can just do a hold basic to trigger a combo. Um, if you do pig rush, which is just the dash attack, you're able to go into combo, um, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, you can also... Uh, I think in assist, you're able to do that too. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure you go into combo. Yeah, right here. Um, when you do an assist follow-up, you can go, in, go into combo. Um, I think in chain, chain you don't go into combo because, well, it's a chain attack, of course. But um, it's still pretty, pretty cool. Um, she's probably going to do a lot of damage anyway because of her stats. So, yeah. Um, but um, what I'm trying to say here is that her main core gameplay is just to go into combo so you're able to activate the shield that she provides right here, which is her core passive. Um, she is also going to be dazing the enemy, of course, because of her own impact. Her own impact is probably going to be high enough to, uh, well, inflict daze really fast. So she basically becomes a two-in-one -one hybrid. She becomes a support and she becomes a stun character, which is pretty, pretty cool, really. Um, of course, there are her mindscapes, but, well, we are free to place here. So, yeah, um, we don't talk about mindscapes. And that's basically it, really. Um, if you do want to prepare, of course, for Caesar, she just has the main typical uh, level up things, as you see there. Um, that's that's it. There you go. Um, so, if you want to prepare to level up Caesar, there it is. There, there's your thing. So, yeah. Um, that is Caesar, really. Her main gimmick is really just to provide shields. And then give buffs to her party members. And that's basically it. So yeah. Next up, we have Bernice. Which is the Fire Anomaly agent right here. So Bernice is pretty, pretty cool. Um, we can just look at her level 60 stats right here. And it looks like her level up stat is Energy Regen. Yep, her core bonus stat is Energy Regen. So with Energy Regen, she's just able to spam EXs so much to the point where, uh, well, EXs don't matter anymore. So yeah, basically, I guess you could think of it like Sokaku. Yeah, Sokaku. She's just the, she's just fire Sokaku, I guess. Um, but for Anomaly Agents. So yeah. Well, anyways, we could talk about her kit. 
Um, we're gonna be going over her core first because that's her main reason why. Um, well, everyone's core is really important, and that basically tells you how she plays. So for Bernice, um, her whole point is to get ignition points. When you get enough ignition points, you're able to do a lot of burn damage, which is pretty cool. As you see there, we could just read the raw of um, text right here. So when you consume ignition points, you could have it up to 100. For each energy point consumed, you're able to uh, accumulate 2% of ignition points. When you get to 50, she'll enter fuel special um, until the ignition points are exhausted. And when entering the battlefield, you get 100% ignition points. So um, that's basically the uh, attack power that um, Bernice is able to do. When you uh, do consume ignition points, it's able to do a uh, anomaly build up of fire damage, which is really, really good. Um, well, now we can talk about uh, all her other stuff. So in the fuel special state, she's able to increase her fire damage by this amount, of course. Um, it depends on how much points you have, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, um, you basically just want to uh, do just as much fire damage as you can. And, um, well, we could talk about her other stuff, too. So when any character in the team um, attacks an enemy, an Ember effect will trigger, which is what they talked about earlier in Bernice's um, special program. Uh, as long as well, any of your uh, party members attack, they're able to do a fire state, um, which does a lot of damage right here. As you see there, this, these are the percentages, of course, of um, her attack power. So, yeah. Um... Of course, these percentages, um, I forgot to mention this in Caesar, but these percentages are her core. So basically, we have to look at the max multiplier here. So for her core, of course, you're going to get 700% of your own impact. That is your max core level for um, her max core level for the shield. She gets 2000 points for Bernice is basically the same thing. 30% fire damage That's going to be your max core level. And then for 300% of Bernice's attack, that is, of course, your max core level as well. So basically, um, you just want to max it out. But for now, of course, since you're probably going to be at core level 1 for the most part, 15, 150. And I'm for Caesar, 150, 50. So yeah. Um, so again, uh, I guess I'll just repeat myself. Uh, her whole point is just to do fire damage to consume ignition points to just do a bunch of fire damage so yeah um it is really really cool um and it's really really great really um also if you want to keep in mind the embers effect aka i think what they call is the uh fuel fire effect uh, i'm pretty sure that's what they call it um which just does uh skill damage so yeah th this is just considered skill damage um well, she looks pretty cool. I mean, she just does a bunch of fire damage. Get ready for her to do a lot of burn damage. It's going to be ridiculous to see there. 30% fire damage and 300% of her attack power. That's really, really good. And we can talk about her uh, well, additional ability. So her additional ability is uh, really, really weird. So when another character in your squad shares the same attribute or faction. Attribute. Which means that she only is able to pair up with fire agents and sons of Caledon characters. This limits her team options, by the way. You want to know why? It's because of her additional ability. So, well, I guess I'll read it to you now so I don't lie to you. Upon hitting an enemy with an EX special attack, the next shock effect inflicted on the target increases shock damage by 18%. This effect can stack up to two times, and each enemy can trigger it once per skill use. Reset when the shock effect ends. You heard that right, right? A fire... A fire anomaly character needing a shock agent. So, Grace. Anton. Ching Yi. She needs those agents. But guess what? Her additional ability condition... Sucks! It sucks! It absolutely sucks. So, um, it's really good. Don't get me wrong. It's a really good effect. I mean, 18% shock damage increase can affect up to two times. That is really, really busted. With a net total of 36% shock damage, that is really, really busted for sure. But, because of this, it kind of sucks. So, well, I guess we could theory craft here because why not? So let's theory craft here. So what are the agents that can pair with her that can basically inflict shock? Well, not much really. So let's talk about the electric characters in the game that we have right now. So we have Ching Yi, Reyna, 
Anton Grace. Those are the four agents in the game that are basically electric characters, I'm pretty sure. If there is five, then, uh, well, oops. But I'm pretty sure uh, there are only four agents in the game that have electric. We don't count Seth, by the way, because, uh, well, Seth is a defense. But I guess we could talk about him, too. Um, Seth, uh, well, I guess you can just uh, pair up Seth with uh, Bernice. But at the same time, uh, well, he doesn't trigger shock. Um, unlike um, the four of the agents, which is why I want to discuss about them. The four agents, um, besides Seth, of course, um, inflict shock really, really fast. Chingy on third uh, normal or third basic. Reyna, um, you can just give her um, AM to just basically increase her anomaly buildup. For uh, Grace, of course, she's an anomaly character. She thrives off of shock. And then for Anton, he does more damage on shocked enemies. Of course, he wants to do that. For uh, Seth, however, he's just a uh, well swap and go character. He doesn't really inflict that much shock, so that's why I don't really count him. But uh, for the sake of uh, well comparing, I guess we'll just include him because why not? Uh, well, sorry if I said I did uh, include four, but I'm changing my mind. Uh, I'm gonna include five. So we have five electric agents in the game that could probably do this. Seth. Most likely not, but he does give 100 anomaly um, proficiency, which is extremely good. But um, I guess we could just talk about it. So um, let's consider the fact that Bernice's attribute is fire and her faction is Sons of Caledon. So what does she pair up with, really? She can pair up with Anton, actually, because, uh, well, the faction can actually uh, pair up with Anton through Caesar. Caesar and Kaleida. Those are the two characters that can actually pair up with her. So, for Caesar, remember, her main additional ability right here, we can just uh, go into her core right here. Basically, it is a parry support, aka any agent with a defensive assist. Anton has a defensive assist. You can literally pair him up with Caesar. And Caesar, uh, uh, faction, is basically Sons of Caledon. Bernice is in Sons of Caledon. You can pair him up with that. Or you could use... Uh, Kaleida. Kaleida also pairs up with um, Anton. You could bring Anton into uh, Bernice. And Bernice is a fire attribute agent, so it pairs up with Kaleida. And Kaleida is a fire agent, so that's pretty cool. Um, you can also pair up with Seth, I'm pretty sure. Um, you can. Um, you, uh, Seth is a defensive assist. You could pair him up with Caesar. Once you pair up with Caesar, you can just go into Bernice. But then again, you want to trigger shock. Um, that is the reason why she has that additional ability. So he doesn't really trigger shock that much unless you give him AM. But he doesn't want AM. He wants ER. So yeah, um, it's, it's just really weird, really. Um, and most of his basic attacks don't inflict... I think shock really that well except for EX. EX I think does half but you're gonna be spending 75% of your meter anyway so it's, it's just really really weird um but um that also works too um but the best team by far for Bernice is going to be Grace Kaleida Bernice yeah Grace Kaleida Bernice so why is that well Let's think of it this way. Caesar's additional ability only pairs up with parry supports. Guess what? Grace doesn't have a parry support. She has a dodge support. Yeah, she has an evasive dodge. Which means that she can't pair up with Caesar. Bernice can't pair up with Grace either because of her attribute. Her attribute's electric. Bernice's attribute is fire. It, it doesn't work. She is also not from the Sons of Caledon, uh, Grace. Grace is from Bellabog Industries, so of course she can't pair up with them. So, what's the next best thing you can do? Put Kaleida on the team. Kaleida is a fire attribute agent, which pairs up with Bernice, who's also fire agent. And guess what Kaleida's in? Uh, Kaleida is in Bellabog Industries. And who else is in Bellabog Industries? Grace. You can pair up Grace with Kaleida. Kaleida pairs up with Bernice, making the ultimate team for this passive. Yep. So this means that if you want to get uh, Bernice's best team in the game, you have to go get Grace and Kaleida from the standard banner. 
You know how hard it is to get Aegis from the standard banner? Really hard. Unless you do 300 pulls, of course. But, yikes. <laughs> yikes. But, the good thing about Bernice is that she doesn't need it. Yep. Um, if you really do want to increase the shock damage bonus, and if you want to go uh, use her at her full possible potential, of course, run this additional. But, she doesn't need it, because all of her stuff in her core is good anyway. So, yeah, it, it's just... It's just really a dilemma right here, but if you want to use Bernice at her maximum full potential, you have to run her with Kaleida Grace. Because Kaleida is the stunner, she's able to stun, she's able to do fire anomaly thanks to her enhanced normal attacks, of course. Um, Bernice is able to also inflict burn really fast, and then of course the electric shock damage comes from Grace. Grace is able to inflict shock really, really fast as well. So yeah, it's really, really good. So that's enough about her core. I um, had to go on a tangent here because, well, it's just her additional um, condition is just really, really weird. It it's so weird. You have to like actually theory craft and think about how to pair up agents with her. So yeah. But um, anyways, enough about that. Time to talk about her special. This is her main bread and butter right here. So um, of course, we already saw in the uh, special program, she's able to do flamethrower. Um, this is without EX. She's able to just get a lot of anomaly buildup anyway, which is really, really good. Um, her EX does a lot more fire damage. She also gets anti-interruption resistance, and she's able to dodge on her EX, which is really, really cool as well. So both of them are extremely good um, right here. So yeah, you have the E, and then you have the long press one, which gives you dodge. Um, you can also long press on this one too. That also gives you dodge too. And it is able to get an anti-interruption resistance. It's really, really good. Yeah, so, um, well, I guess the one way to describe it is flamethrower, EX, double flamethrower. Yeah, um, th that's it, really. Um, her whole gimmick is to put out flames and, yeah, I'll just burn the enemy to cinders. Th that's basically it. Um, all of her other stuff is kind of useless. Ex I guess the only um, thing that's worthwhile is Chain, of course. She's able to do fire damage. She's able to continuously do fire damage on ult. It's really, really cool. Um, as you see here, uh, well, that's basically it. It's her core special chain. That's basically it. Her basics don't really do that much. You can't just do normals to do... Uh, fire damage. You can also get ignition points too, um, just in case you want to get ignition points, you're able to do uh, normals. Um, also, you could just uh, do normals to do a long press on a scorching d swing double, which is really good. good. It means you're able to combo into it, which is pretty, pretty nice right here. So yeah, it is really, really cool, really. Um, so yeah, you're able to do 35 ignition points. It's just really, really cool. Um, as for dodge, um, dodge is just basic, really. As you see there, it's just one sentences. You're able to dodge, you're able to do fire damage. Yeah, it's pretty basic, really. And her assist right here is pretty, pretty good, too. She's able to just do fire damage as well. So, yeah, it's just nothing really that special. So, basically, what her main gameplay is, is, of course, you just use basic to go into special. As you see there, you're able to, uh, get ignition points. You're able to consume it. Um, when you consume the, uh, thing, you're able to do that. Yeah, so the fuel fire state, of course, fuel special. So, yeah, when you use EX, of course, you're just gonna be doing a lot of fire damage. That's basically all her main gameplay is. She's just, she has to go into the fuel special state to go into that, and in order to do that, you just do basic into long press special or EX to able to do just a ton of anomaly buildup, of course. So, yeah. Well, that's basically it for her gameplay, I guess. Um... We can just look at the, uh, well, the level ups right here. As you see there, that's what she gets, of course. And that's basically it for both agents right there. So, in my opinion on both of these agents, um, I guess, um, as for, uh, well, as for Caesar, definitely a meta agent. Um, there are a lot of agents in the game that are defensive assist agents. And they pair up with Caesar, so yeah, it's a no-brainer. Of course, you pull for her. She's really, really good. Um, she's able to provide shields. She's able to provide a attack. She's able to do more damage for enemies to enemies. She's able to um, help out the team really well. 
and she is a hybrid. She's a support and a stunner at the same time. So definitely a must pick up, of course. For Bernice, not as much, but um, if you really do like shock damage, if you really do love double anomaly teams, then yeah, she's a great pickup. She's able to work with Jane. She's able to work with Grace. She's able to work with basically anyone. She's even able to work on her own team, she, which is really, really cool. So yeah. Um, as for pulling priority, of course, I would say Caesar first and then Bernice second. Of course, if you really want both of them. But I say it in my Genshin videos and I'll say it here for ZCZ. Pull for what you want. <laughs> Just pull for what you want. As I always say, love triumphs all. If you love the character, if you love their kit, if you love their personality, if you love their story, or if you just love how the way they look, just pull for them. Uh, let your heart decide what you want to pull, not the meta and not the statistics, not anything. Let your heart decide. You love Caesar uh, because of the story, because of her character. Yes, pull. You like Bernice because of her story, because uh, she is a really cool agent, um, and also because, well, she is a happy-go-lucky um, person. Pull for her. Uh, I'm not stopping you guys. Uh, I, I guess all I have to say is love triumphs all. If you love the character, pull for them. So yeah. <laughs> And that is basically it for the uh, segment right there. We're already at 35 minutes. Holy crap. But um, it is under the uh, special program time. So I guess we can just get it to 40 minutes. So anyways, let's transition back to special program. And let's try to finish this off right here. So yeah. Well, anyways, um, let's go over to the events right here. They... They just put out a lot of events. So, of course, uh, um, in addition of the main story, um, we have a lot of stuff to see here. So, as you see there, we have Overlord's Feast. Um, in this event, you're able to uh, help out in a tavern, which uh, basically uh, lets you know more about the Outer Ring and all that stuff, of course. You're able to do a ton of stuff. Um, just basically, it gives you a free agent. And guess what agent that is? Yep. It's what I mentioned in the beginning of the video, Lucy. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool, really. Um, honestly, take advantage of this event. Free Lucy. Lucy's really, really good. Don't sleep on her, um, even though she is free um, to get. She is actually really good. Probably one of the best supports in the game now because she has Bernice on the team and Caesar, which also works really well on other teams as well. So yeah, she's just a main staple on fire teams in general. Definitely not a sleeper for sure. And well, we could just talk about Overlord's Feast. So see there, you're able to um, put food out. You're able to accept quests and stuff. And yeah, um, when you have enough points, you can get Lucy. You can recruit her, which is pretty cool. So yeah, um, for the second thing, we have a new arcade event. Yep, it's a new arcade game, Bizarre Brigade. And it looks like it's going to be kind of like, a, I guess, a uh, roguelike game. You're able to shoot stuff, as you see there. Um, able to collect coins to um, get purchased power-ups. You see there, yep, these are the power-ups right there. So yeah, it's basically just a roguelike game. It's literally just a roguelike game. Um, I'm pretty sure you can play it with teammates, but I don't think... I don't think um, multiplayer exists. Um, I hope so. But uh, yeah, um, you can run it solo. Probably new achievements, of course. So yeah, um, don't miss out on this event for the uh, rewards, of course. Next up, we have Roaming the Ether right here. Roaming the Ether is basically just... Um, yeah, it's just a lot of stuff to do. Uh, it's basically like Camellia Golden Week. It's literally Camellia Golden Week. You explore a map you're, uh, in the TV world to do a lot of stuff right there. So yeah, it's basically um, yeah, it's basically just another event you're able to do. Um, I think it also includes story as well. I'm not sure, but it's basically um, a, another uh, event, of course. Um, next up, we have Rito for You. We get another name tag, which is pretty cool. Um, we're able to basically get a lot of rewards. It's just basically a puzzle simulator right here. Um, which also has a ton of lore too, so yeah, a puzzle lore game, I guess. I guess that fits. Um, another event we have here is One for One Friendship Fair, which is, uh, well, it's a, <laughs> it's an event where you just do stuff and you get rewards. So yeah, Liban, 
it's literally Liban, as you see there. Yeah, so you collect the necessary rewards, you help out um, people, and you just get all those rewards, which is pretty good. A lot of rewards here, really. Um, we also get um, much more um, commissions to do. So yeah, um, we're able to get more commissions. We're able to basically uh, get more combat commissions for the new... Um, enemies in the game of course you see there that's probably one of the enemies in the game we have to deal with of course um we also have a ton of other things too yeah like the jane doe boss fight uh spoiler alert if you haven't fought jane doe yet but yeah um that's the shadow jane doe from the combat missions so yeah it's it's really really cool and now we can actually talk about well the important thing right here the disc drives so um because um, in fact that we do have a disc drive thing, they announced something special for this, but I'll save it for later because we have to talk about these new disc drives because these disc drives could probably honestly change anything really. So, Anomaly Proficiency plus 30, that's really good. And this is, um, the Bernie set, obviously, uh, Chaos Jazz, because look at this, fire damage, electric damage. So, you can just read it out loud. Um, because they do have the effects right here. So, fire damage and electric damage is increased by 15% when off-field damage dealt by EX special attacks and assist attacks is increased by 20%. When the character switches back onto the field, this buff continues for 5 seconds. The lasting effect can be triggered once every 7.5 seconds. So, this is obviously a Bernice uh, disc drive, of course. She's able to do fire damage, of course, which is really, really cool. Um, and she's able to do off-field damage more um, thanks to her uh, ember effect, of course. Her ember effect just does massive uh, fire damage off-field, which is meant for Bernice, of course. As for the electric damage portion, um, it also works well, too, because shock, of course. Shock is going to be doing a lot of stuff, too. Um, you're going to be getting a lot of disorder effects, too. Um, especially since if you are going to be uh, running Bernice with her additional ability. It's just a really, really good set in general. Probably Grace can work with this. Um, now that I think about it. Um, because it increases electro damage. And off-field electro damage, too. So, like, shock, basically. Um, but I'm pretty sure Bernice is set into um, the four-piece freedom blues set. So, you can't just run four-piece freedom... And then you can run Bernice with Chaos Jazz to get uh, a bunch of anomaly shenanigans. So yeah, it's really, really cool. And then as for the uh, other set, we have Protopunk. So Protopunk is obviously going to be Caesar's uh, drive disc, of course. Because look at this. It's so basic, really. Um, shield effect plus 15%. Yep, yeah, and Caesar is a shield character. When any squad member triggers a defensive assist or evasive assist, all squad members deal 50% increased damage, lasting for 10 seconds. Passive effects of the same name do not stack. So, yeah, um, since you're going to be running a lot of defensive assist characters anyway, um, yeah, Caesar's obviously going to benefit from this. You're going to be doing a lot of defensive assists. It's really, really common um, in this game to do parries and whatnot. And plus, even if you do defensive assists, you're able to pass on the buff anyway. So yeah, it's really, really cool. So Caesar, obviously this is going to be a rest set. Um, can be triggered with any squad member. So she doesn't even need to um, do it herself. She can just let the other party members do it for her. And you're probably going to be doing it anyway. Because it's really, really good. Because, again, you're just going to be doing the EX, of course, to get her shield. Do a parry. And then just increase more damage. So, yeah. It's really, really good. Super, 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 super good. So, yeah. Um, these uh, drive discs uh, are really, really good for their respective agents. Um, as for Chaos Jazz... Potentially, Grace can use it for Proto Punk. Potentially, uh, potentially Seth or uh, Ben could probably use it too. Um, it really depends on what you want your agents to be built as. But um, well, one thing's for sure: Caesar's best set is Proto. Chaos Jazz is Bernice's best set. So yeah. Um, and because of these new drive this sets, we're gonna get double drops. Yep, as you see here, double drops on HIA. As you see there, double drops for a lot of stuff. Um, we also get double drops on discs, which is really, really good. So yeah, we're just going to be getting a lot of double drops. Really, really nice. That means that we're able to just um, get these done really quickly. 
We have a shield def defense ambush node. This is going to be new endgame content. Yep, new endgame content for us, baby. Ambush node. Really, really cool. They haven't delved into what ambush node is, but it is a shield defense mode, which means that it's endgame content. So yeah. Um they also announced other things too, right here. Yeah, uh, investigator training course. You're able to get rewards off of this too. Um, as you see there, um, there is a lot of things to do. And basically, it um, it basically puts you in the shoes of an investigator. Yes, you play as basically what it's like to be an investigator. You complete challenges, of course, to get rewards. Um, basically, um, and of course, uh, there as you see there, there are um factions. If you use a certain faction, they get more buffs, of course, because they are tailored to them, as you see here. So yeah, look at that. It's really, really cool. Um, yeah, it's basically just a event. You also get to use trial characters that you haven't used before or you don't own, which is pretty nice too. Yeah, it's just really, really cool event, really. You're able to test out a lot of more um, agents uh, on your side, which is pretty, pretty nice. Of course, there's going to be a new Hollow Zero Blitz Withering Garden. So they basically rehauled um, Hollow Zero. So Hollow Zero now um, is accessible to anyone. Yeah, so you don't you don't have to be a certain internaut level to access Withering Garden. By the way, in order to access Withering Garden, you have to be level 40. Yeah, you don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> so basically, you get to do it as soon as you unlock Hollow Zero, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, as for the, uh, Weathering Garden mode, um, Weathering Garden mode automatically skips the TV segments of the game. Yep, it's, which means that all your grinding is going to be faster now, as you see there. Um, it's just basically a new mode, non-stop fighting, as you see there, she finished the battle, able to get Rezonium for free. So yeah, it's really, really cool. You're able to basically just get a lot of stuff done, so yeah. Um, of course, you can increase the things to increase the rewards, of course, um, to uh, just get a Withering Garden um, 11 run, of course. Um, the more points you add, the more um, stuff you get. As you see there, uh, you can get um, investigation points. Really, really cool. And as for, well, uh, the other events right here, we get, of course, a ton of free rewards. 10 reels. 10 tapes. Yeah, 10 tapes. Yep, really cool. Um, for the uh, bank pawn, 10 bank pawn. Um, of course, uh, we could talk about the other. I think they also uh, offered new um, quality of life as well. Yeah, so right here, you don't have to explore more than once. Yeah, which means that if you do miss out on stuff, like for, say, the, um, the hero's quest, um... The Heroes Quest Commission, which basically takes forever, and I mean forever, to get to the end. Um, if you do miss something, of course. Um, this basically uh, helps you get all the materials you missed, which is really, really cool. So basically, all you have to do is explore it once, you get all the rewards for it, and that's basically it. Yeah, it's a pretty cool quality of life feature. Means that you don't have to just um, do a lot of stuff. But the only downside is that, of course, it takes time obviously so yeah um as for the other um updates right here they made tv mode extremely fast as you see there basically cutting down on animations as you see there um it cuts down on zooms it cuts down on everything yeah all animations are just faster in general and they made tv moving extremely extremely fast so yeah it's extremely extremely cool that uh we get this really really nice quality of life change right here um and as for, uh, well, this, this quality of life change, super, super good. I'm glad. I am so glad they did this. So you, basically, they gave you a backup battery charge. You could consume your stamina or your energy and then put it into the backup battery. So basically, just in case you have to do something or you have to eat dinner or you have to uh, go on vacation and you can't play the game, um, you could store up your energy mean that you don't have to play the game basically and then when you do want to play the game and if you want to consume all of your stamina for something like disk drive uh farming or denny farming or something like that you could just use it all up which is pretty nice it's basically the condensed resin system in genshin except that well 
it's this the battery backup really really cool really super super good um it looks like you only start up to 80 which is fine i guess um but um still having the option to basically back up a battery charge is really really nice so yeah you're able to spend a lot of stuff it's pretty pretty cool really um honestly a great quality of life change of course um they also talked about uh other things too yes this this right here super super good that they did this holy crap you know how many times it is that it's super annoying to change teams in this game you could change teams on the fly because now they have squads just like Genshin. You're able to make multiple teams. Really, really cool as you see there. You're able to name them too, which is really, really nice. Holy crap, it took them forever. Well, I mean forever, I mean two months to do this, but they did it. They did it right here. So much good quality of life here. You're able to make your own teams with your uh, bang boos, of course, just making your own squads. It's really, really good. Super, 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 super good. And another good quality of life. So basically, you know how uh, Hollow Zero, or um, well, in this case, Shiyu Defense, you, you know how Shiyu Defense always loves to change which enemies have weaknesses? Well, you could change that. So you could swap. So, well, they did it right here. So um, I can show it here. Um, once they do show it. So you see there, the enemy's resistance is ice and they're using the mono ice team. So, uh, well, in the good old days of 1.1 and 1.0, you have to go into the party, you have to swap out a lot of stuff, put it, everything in team one or the first half, and that's basically it. Now you can just do it with one button press. Yep. Holy crap, this is such a good update. You're able to swap. Meaning that you don't have to waste time. It's really, really good. It saves you about 10 seconds worth of clicking, which is really, really good. It means that everything can just move faster. It's just super good. All of these quality of lives, man. It's super, super good um, for the game. And I think that's, uh, well, they teased about like a couple more things, really. Um, I think, yeah. So in 1.2, you can't play as certain agents. You can only play as Caesar and Bernice, as you see there. You can play as Belle, Wise, Bernice, Caesar, basically anyone really. Um, but um, you can only play as Bernice and Caesar in the, of course, the uh, in the outer ring, because of course Caesar and Bernice are from the outer ring. Um, but um, in version 1.4, they specifically said in version 1.4, you're able to play as any agent um, in the uh, city life, which is really really cool. And they also added this. So starting in version 1.2, you can skip time. You can skip time. You know how terrible it is in 1.0 and 1.1 to progress through? So basically the fastest way to do it in the game, um, well, before the special program announced that 1.2 had this feature, the best way to progress time in the game is you have to do one mission. You have to do one mission in the story. It could be a combat mission that takes around like 10 seconds to beat. Um, you do that. Then you sleep. And then you do that again. And then you sleep again. Yeah, so basically, you do combat, then sleep, combat, sleep. Yeah, that's the only way you can progress time fast in this game. You don't have to do that anymore. You can skip to whichever day you want, meaning that you're not stuck on time, which is really, really good. Saves you a bunch of time. It'll probably save me like two minutes of gameplay. It is super, 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 super good. All of these quality of life, man, super, super good. And that's basically it for uh, Tour Day Inferno, aka 1.2. We discussed about a lot of things, about a lot of how much stuff they were able to do. It's just super, super nice, really. Um... They were able to just get a lot of stuff. Uh, it's just super, super good. It's just... I can't... I can't describe it. Like, it's super, super nice, really. Um, that we get a lot of uh, content for this game. It's just super, super good. So, yeah. Well, anyways. Um, that is basically it for the... Uh, well... Uh, for this uh, version update, of course. This special program. So, again. I just want to say... 
thank you guys for sticking around. That was a long video. So yeah. Well, anyways, if you do like this uh, special program video, be sure to leave a like down below, of course. And also subscribe if you are new to the channel. Um, it really does mean a lot if you do support me by leaving a like and subscribing. It really does mean a lot. Helps me keep me motivated and making more videos for you guys. So again, thank you guys so much for all the support. It really does mean a lot um, to me. So again, thank you guys for supporting the channel. It really does mean a lot. And as always, for the comments, what do you think of 1.2? You think it's good? You think it's bad? You think this is the best update ever? Or do you want to perhaps get more out of it? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thank you guys for watching this Sunless Zone Zero special program video. Uh, well, discussion and thoughts. And I'll see you guys in the next Genshin. Well, not Genshin, but ZZZ Gotcha video. <laughs>